Star Trek, the original series, this side of paradise, bridge painter, approaching Omar Gokon Sita, freeze, sir. Kirk, stand in all that, Mr. Painter. Painter, yes, sir, your aura. Captain, Kirk, yes, sir, Tenant, your aura. I've been transmitting, emitting the contact signal every five minutes. All I get is dead air. So I continue. Kirk maintain transmission pattern till we establish orbit. Aurora. Aye, aye, sir. Kirk, Mr. Spock, there were 150 men, women and children in that colony. What are the chances of survivors? Spock, absolutely none, Captain. Behold, retroid, hold, rays of oh, such a recent discovery. We have not yet have full knowledge of their nature. It is known, however, the living animal tissue disintegrates under exposure. So Ali's group could not have survived after three years. Kirk, are you saying that those people built a future in a place knowing they might not survive? It's what I'm saying. They knew there was a risk. It's Kirk, and what about us? Can we afford to send people to the planet's surface? Spock, the breakdown of tissue does not develop immediately. We can risk a limited exposure, painter. We have a your bit, sir. I have pinpointed a settlement. Kirk, thank you, Mr. Painter. Mr. Spock, a quick belaying painter to five or five to accompany me to planet service. Include Dr. McCoy and Bolly is this. I want them in ten minutes, farmyard. Group band dane down to the farm, complete with wooden fence and automatic paths. There are clapboard buildings and even a stable block. Kirk, another dream that failed? That's my thing sadder. It took those people a year to make the trip to Earth. They came all the way and died, Elias. Elias. Hardly that, sir. Welcome to Aracon Shelter 3. I'm Elias Savolo. Oh. Captain's log, stardate 3417.3. For a mission to Aracon Shelter 3 would be an happy one. We experienced to f- expected to find no survivors of the archaeological colony there. Apparently, our information was incorrect. Finally, out Elias. We wasn't, haven't been as seen anyone outside our group for four years since we left Earth. We are expecting someone for some time. Our suspect radio doesn't work properly. I'm afraid we don't have anyone who can master its intricacies. Kirk, actually, Mr. Sorolli, we didn't come here because of your silent radio. Alas, it makes little difference, Captain. You're here. We're happy to see you. Come, let me show you our settlement. McCoy. Or oh, um, pure speculation, just an educated guess. I say that man is alive. Spot, Captain, the planet is being bombarded by bradoid rays, as, I, as our reports indicated. This intensity will be safe for a week. Yes, we, but, Kirk, these people shouldn't be alive. Salute, is it possible that they're not? McCoy, you shook hands with him, Jim. His flesh was warm, he's alive. There's no doubt about that. Spock, there's no, there's no, also no question of the fact that bradoid rays or incovertly daintily. And no miracle connected with it, Doctor. You knew that. You know that. No cures, no serums, no antidotes. If a man supposed long enough, he dies. Kirk, gentlemen, we're debating in a vacuum. Let's get some answers. Farmyard Elias leads the way to a comfortable room with wooden furniture and gin ham curtains. Elias, there are two other settlements, but we have... But we have 45 colonists here. Kirk, what a reason for the dispersal. Elias, we felt these three goats would have better potential. Disease were to strike one group. One group, the others would be less likely to be affected. You see, Aracon, the ideal archaeological planet, we turned it not to suffer the fate of the expeditions that went before us. Lena, Elias, Elias, Lena, come here to meet our guests. This is Lena Komale, our botanist. This is Captain Kirk. Dr. McCoy, Mr. Spock, Lena, Lena, Mr. Spock, and I have met before. It's been a long time. Kurt, Mr. Solano, though, we have a mission here. Ex- ex- examinations, tests, Elias. By all means, make them. I think you'll find a settlement is an interesting one. A philosophy is a simple one. A man should return to the less complicated life. We have few mechanical things here. No vehicles, no weapons. We are in harmony here. Complete peace. Kirk. We try to not interfere with your work. Alas, make yourselves at home, gentlemen. 
Outside by the barn, Canada lifts. What exactly are we looking for anyway, sir? Sulu, whatever it doesn't look right, whatever what, whatever that is. When it comes to farms, I don't know what to look, what look, what look right or wrong. But if you, if it were, if it uh, were two feet from me, you mean like that weird alien plant right next to you? Cut it off, opening the, the, the door, barn door. Hey, Sulu, what is it? Kalilov, no cows. This barn isn't built for them, just for storage. So, come to think of it, we haven't seen any animals. No horses, no pigs, not even a dog. Nothing. Farmyard, Elias. You know the Vulcan? Leela, on Earth, six years ago. Elias, Elias, do you love him? Leela, if I did, it was, in, um, I, it was important only for myself. Elias, how did he feel? Leela, Mr. Spot feelings are never expressed to me. He said he was none... He it, 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 it said he's none to give. Nice. Would you like him to stay with us now? To be one of us? Lena. There is no choice, Elias. He will stay. Drawing room. In another part of the farmhouse, McCoy is conducting medical examinations. McCoy. Yeah, that'd be all. Thank you very much. A man leaves. Kirk enters. Kirk, anything? McCoy is. I mean, fine men so far. Varying from eight in ages from 23 to 59. They're all in perfect condition. Textbooks responses. Heart, lungs, excellent. Coordination, excellent. Reflexes, everything's excellent. Is there any more, many more of them? I could throw away my syringe. Single. Kirk, could we take a beeps? Kirk, Kirk here. Part of the Kirk. Doc, Doc, here, Captain. It seems to be a total absence of life on the planet. The exception of the colonists and various types of flora. Kirk, Sulu, had the same observation. Any explanations? Doc. Not at the moment, sir. I'm conducting various tests for the tricopter. Results are inconclusive. Throwing in Kirk. Very well, continue investigations. Kirk, out. Look what no one else. That's peculiar. Kirk, yes, especially in view of the fact that the records of this expedition include they did have some for breeding and food purposes. Apparently none of them survived. Kirk, I'd like to see the medical records on the expedition. Kirk, yes, I thought you might. Hands over a computer desk. Oh, yes, Captain. I've been looking for you. You haven't seen our fields and crops. I'd like to show you, a Doctor, what we accomplished here. I'm quite afraid I have to blow up bow out. I have to continue with the with the medical examinations. However, if you find anything anyone else else health is that to be perfect as yours, I Kirk, he promised to throw away his shingle. Alas, you're there you'll find the workings here, Captain Field. But, Alas, this is the reason, Captain. This is the soil will grow anything we plant in it. It's perfect world. We can moderate. We have a moderate climate. Moderate rains all year round. Gives us all we need. It's perfect, Leslie. Pardon me, Captain. Only biology reports that ready, sir. Alas, I have to work to attend to myself, Captain. He leaves them. Kirk, go ahead, Lieutenant. Leslie, I've heard Savola saying they could grow anything here. That's true, sir. They've got a variety of crops in grains, potatoes, beans. Kirk, make your point. Kirk, Leslie, well, sir, the archaeological colony, that they have actually very little acreage planted. It's enough to sustain the colony, but very little more. Kirk, it's a, like a jigsaw puzzle, all in one colour. No key to where the pieces fit in. Why, communicate beeps, Kirk? Kirk here, McCoy, this is McCoy. Jim, I think you better get back here. Kirk, trouble? McCoy, no, but I'd like to, you to see this for yourself. Kirk, on my way. McCoy, Savannah's farmhouse, McCoy. Savannah's medical record four years ago when, he, when the expedition left Earth. which is scar tissue on his lungs from lobar pneumonia. Suffered when he was a child. No major operations. There was an epidemy. You see, all required inoculations, etc. Now, what's strange about that? We're calling nothing, but when I examined the man, no more than two hours ago, you know what his reasons were? Perfect, perfect, and perfect. Just like everyone else I've examined here. Kirk, man, an instrument round function? Kirk, McCoy, no. I thought of that and tested it on myself. It accurately recorded my lack of tonsils and those two broken ribs I once, I had once. It did not recall the scar tissue and some of his lungs. They did record a healthy appendix where one was supposedly removed.
filled Spock, his hand in, scanning amongst the rows of dry looking some things. Spock, nothing but not even insects. Yet your plants grow. You survived. Exposure on Bretroid to Bretroid rays. Lila, that we, can be explained. Spock, please do. Lila, later. Spock, I never understood the female capacity to avoid direct answer to any question. Lila, I never understood you until now. You always a place in here. There will always be a place in here where no one will, could come. That there is only the face you allow people to see. On one side, you allow them to know, Spock. I would like to know how you people managed to survive here. Need I missed you, Spock? Logically, you should have be should be all be dead. Need if I tell you how we survive, will you try to understand? We feel about our life here, about each other. Spock, emotions are alien to me. I'm a scientist, Lena. Someone else might believe that. Your shipmates, your captain, but not me. Come, join me. Kurt, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Sorrell, within the hour I received orders from Starfleet Command to evacuate all personnel from this colony. Naturally, we'll inform the people to begin preparations. We have to, recommendations for your board enterprise. Elias, no. Kirk, it's not a arbitrary decision on my part. I gave you have my orders. Elias, Captain, it's entirely necessary. We have no danger here. McCoy, we explain the bird would raise to you, and the effect, can't you understand? Elias, Doctor, how can I make you understand? Your only interest has shown that we are in perfect health. We have no deaths here. Kirk, what about your animals? Elias, we are vegetarians. Kirk, that does answer my question, sir. What did your, why did all your animals die? Elias, Captain, your stress is very important, you stress very important matters. We will not leave pasture. The grass is brown and dry. The pink flowers are growing. Lena, it's not much further, Spock. You've not yet explained the nature of this thing. Lena, the basic properties and elements are not important. What important is it gives life, peace, love. Spock, we described it was once known as v- vinicola as a happiness pill. And you as a scientist should know it's not possible. Lena, come, I won't. I, I was one of the first to find them, the spores. Spock spores? When the pink flowers shoots things at him, at him, Spock clutches his head, falls around in pain. Spock, no. Lena, it won't hurt. Spock, no, I can't. Please don't. Lena, not like, not like us. It doesn't, it can't, doesn't hurt you. Spock, I'm not like you. Suddenly the pain is gone, Lena. Now, now you belong to all of us, and we to you. You no need to hide your inner face any longer. We understand, Spock. I love you. I love, I can love you. A kiss. Captain Long Sembermental. We've been ordered by Starfleet Command to evacuate the colony on Morcon Free. However, the colony leader, Elias Sorolo, has refused to cooperate all cooperation and will not listen to any arguments, Kirk Farmyard. Kirk Sorolo. Elias, Captain, your arguments are very valid, but you're not, they do not apply to us, Kirk. You're being unreasonable, Elias. Well, nevertheless, excuse me, Captain Kirk. Excuse me, my orders are to remove all the colonists. That's exactly what I intend to do. With or without your help, Elias. Without, I should think. Okay, would you like to uh, to use a butterfly, butterfly net on him, Captain? Kirk, no, I think we'll use a... So, the Captain, we've checked out everything. It seems normal, except for the absence of any animals. Kirk, we have been ordered to evacuate all colonists to Star Base 27. I have one landing party to cooperate, coordinate the colonists and prepare them for transport up to the ship. We need an extra combination of board. Where's Mr. Bob and Mr. Stizzerly? So we haven't seen him. Then since we began our check, McCoy de Sully said he was going to examine some native plants he found. Did Spock call in at all? Kirk, no, he didn't. Gets out communicator. Spock sees so a landing party. Would See to the Sunday parties, would you, Mr. Sulu? So, uh, yes, sir. Kirk Spock. Part of Spock's communicated beeping itself while he's lying in his lap. Look at the clouds. He's changed out of his uniform. He's overall Spock. That one look, looks like a dragon. You see the tail and his both spurs or spines? Need I never seen a dragon? Spock, what I have. On Borough Road 7. But I never stopped to look at the clouds before or rainbows, you know. I can tell you exactly why it, why it, Appears in the sky, but considering its beauty has always been out of the question. Yeah, not here. She picks up the communicator, 
up the community and it opens. Kirk, Spock. Spock, yes. And what do you want? Your father, Kirk? Spock, is that you? Pastor, Spock, yes, Captain. What do you want? Kirk, where are you? Spock, I don't believe I want to tell you. Father, Spock. Kirk, Spock, I don't know what you think you're doing. This is an order. Report back to me at the settlement in ten minutes. We're accurate in all corners to Star Base 27. Pastor, Spock. No, I don't think so. Kirk? Farmyard. Kirk? You don't think so? What? Pasha. Spock, I don't think so, sir. Farmyard. Kirk? Spock, report to me immediately. Pasha, but the communicator drops to the ground during another kiss. Kirk? Spock? A knowledge. Farmyard. Kirk? Spock? This frequency is open, but he doesn't answer. McCoy? Doesn't sound like at all like Spock, Jim. Kirk, no, I thought you said you might like, I thought you said you might like him, if you better a little. McCoy didn't say that, Kirk, you said that. McCoy, but not exactly, you might be in trouble. Kirk, yes, take over the landing party detail and start getting those colonists aboard. McCoy, how did we, you, you find Spock? Kirk, the frequency is open. I act, I act as a homing device. Contact the cell, have him meet you here. Make sure the landing party works in two rooms or two. Don't want anyone left alone down here. Pastor, they finally communicated her. He laughed her. Spock is hanging upside down from a branch in a nearby tree. Kirk? Spock? Clear throat. Mr. Spock? Beam down point. Items have been collected. We've taken up to the ship. You certainly have brought some of the pink plants. McCoy, what are you doing with those things, Adele? No, certainly. I want you to co- take a close look at these, Doc. They're very interesting. Pastor, Kirk. Mrs. Rock, you out of your mind? You told, you've been told to report at me at once, Kirk. Rock, I don't want to. Do you want to, Jim? Kirk, you? Yes, I see. I can see that, Mr. Murillomi. You have to come back to the settlement and prepare to transport up to the ship. Doc, there'll be no excavation, Jim. Perhaps we should go back and get you straightened out. Kirk, Mr. Sulu, Mr. Spock, is under arrest. He's in your custody until we get back to the Enterprise. But very well, come with me. Take Jesus hand and lay his group to a cluster. Climb my plants. We all get sprayed with spores. Kurt Watts? Buck, Mr. Sulu understands, don't you, Mr. Sulu? Sulu, yes, I know. Of course we can't move the colony. I'll be wrong. It'd be wrong. Kirk, I don't know what these plants are or how they work. They're all going back to the with me. And those colonists are getting aboard the ship. Kurt leaves them. But, Kirk, I can see the captain's going to be difficult. Never passed her. No equipment of colonists now. Just plants. Going up to the ship. McCoy with an extreme southern squall. Ready to beam up. Hiya, Jimmy boy. Hey, I'm taking care of everything. Oh, all you're going to do is relax. Doctor orders. Kirk, how many of those did you beam up? McCoy, just be nine on. Hundred on you. Chief. Hey, Doc. Ready to enjoy this. Okay. Everything okay? Up with the, with the plants, Kirk. This is Captain. This is Captain. Beam me up. Chief, you are sure you want. Kirk, I certainly do. Energize. Bridge. Kirk, Lieutenant. Put me through to Admiral Cormac of the Starfleet. You're right. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. I can't do that, Kirk. What do you mean you can't do that? Follow the standard procedure. That's an order. You're right. I know it is, Captain. But you see, all communications are out. Kirk, out. You're right. So, co- so sugar to them. Set, slip to surface. We need that for, we need that for a while. Really for the best, Captain. He leaves the bridge, Kirk finds a plant, throws it angrily across the helm console before storming out in South Corridor. The long crew of crewmen lounging against the wall outside transmittal room. Kirk, get back to your stations. Get back to your stations. Crewman, I'm sorry, sir. We're transporting down to the joining colony. Crewman, Kirk, I said get back to your station. Crewman, no, sir. Kirk, this is new to me, sir, mister. Crewman, yes, it, sir, it is. Captain Log, start date 3417.5. Pl- plants have spread spores throughout the ship, carried by a ventilation system. And an influence, my crew is deserting to join the Oregon Connolly. I can't stop them. I don't know why I've been, not been affected. Nor can I get Dr. McCoy to explain the physiological, physical, psychological aspects of the infection. Pastor McCoy, I'm not interested in any psych- physical, psychological aspects, Jim Boy. We're all perfectly healthy down here. Bridge, Kirk, I've heard the word a lot lately. Perfect. It's, uh, everything's perfect. 
McCoy, yeah, that's right. That's that's just what it is. Kurt, I bet you've grown your tonsils back. Carter, Kurt, shut, shut up. Sure. Hey, you do, boy. You know, you have a real cold Georgia mint jubilant. Huh? Bridge. Kurt, look, Bones, I need your help. Can you run tests for blood samples, anything at all, to give us a lead of what these things are, how to contact them? Part two. McCoy, who wants to counteract Paradise, Jim Boy? Paradise, Bridge, McCoy, McCoy, out. Kirk, Bones, Bones, Sp- Farmhouse, Spock, good point, T. But on this entire ship's compliment, it's been down. I lie, so I'm very pleased the entire landing party is proceeding quite well. Kirk enters. Kirk, where's McCoy? Spock, he went off to create something called a mint julep. As a drink, Jim. Elias, Captain, why didn't you join us? Kirk, it's, it's in your own private paradise? Elias, the spores have made it, made it that. Spock, Kirk, where did you, they originate? Orinate. Spock, it's impossible to say they drifted through space. They finally landed here. You see, they're actually frying on bright red roids. Plant acts as a response. With certainty, the fires of microscopic spores, you find a human body to habit. Elias, in return, they give you complete health and peace of mind. Kirk, what? Paradise? Elias, we have no need or want, Captain. Kirk, it's Spock, it's true, Eden, Jim. There's belonging, there's belonging love. Kirk, no wants, no needs. We aren't meant for that. None of us. Man segments of you, no ambition, no desire. Your more he is. Elias, we have what we need, Kirk, to set a challenge, Spock. I understand, Jim. You'll come around sooner or later. Join us, please. Kirk, I'm going to go back, I'm going back to the ship bridge. All the panels are lit. The lights are on, but nobody's home except one. Kirk, in the room, Scotty, biochemistry, lab, security. Is there anybody on board? This is the captain. He sits in his chair. Kirk, captain's log. Star date 3417.7. So for yourself, all co-personnel have transported to the surface of the planet. Mooted it, Lieutenant Leora, effectively sabotaged the communication station. I can only contact the surface of the planet. The ship can be maintained in orbit for several months. But even with atomic, atomic controls, I cannot fly here alone. In fact, I am marooned here, beginning to realise how big this ship really is, how quiet. I don't know how to get my crew back, how to contract the effect of the spores. I don't know what I can offer against Paradise. But I need his phone early now sprays him with spores. Kirk. And, and Pricer, Mr. Spock. Pricer, Spock, yes, Jim, what is it now? Bridge. Kirk, I'll join you, I understand now. Field. Spock, wonderful, Jim. When did you, when, when you beam down, Kirk? Bridge, Kirk. There are some things in my quarters I want to pack. Field, Kirk, Spock, good, Lena, and I will meet you. At a beam down point, Kirk, Kirk out, Kirk's quarters. Packs the suitcase of a smile on his face. Goes to the safe, gets out his medals. He loses a smile. Transport a room. Kirk puts his suitcase to the transport pad. Goes over to controls. Kirk, no, I can't leave. He's very lead. Emotions, violent emotions, needs anger. Captain's log, supplemental. I think I have discovered the answer, not to carry out, but to carry out my detail. Pain entails risk, considerable risk. Mrs. Bock is much stronger than an ordinary human being. Rouse his great physical strength could kill. There's risk I have to take. Field, Kirk, any promise to Mr. Spock? Spock here. Spock, Spock here. Kirk, it's Jim. Spock, what's keeping you, Jim? We've been waiting in transport room. Kirk, I've been packing some things. I realise that some equipment here that we should... Have to should have done at settlement field. Kirk, you know we can't come back on board once the last of us left. Spock, do you want me to beam up a party transport room? No, Kirk, no. I think you and I can have it. Why don't you beam up now? Field. Spock, just a moment. Won't take long. Do you mind? Leader, I'll wait. Spock, will you beam up, Jim? Transport room. Kirk, with a long metal belt bar in his hand. Energizing Spock reinterrogizes Spock. Kirk. Right, your mutinous, disloyal, discriminate half breed. We see about you deserting my ship. Spock, the term half breed is somewhat impeccable. But Kubernetes is an accurate machine. Can be Kubernetes, not a man. Kirk, what do you think? What makes you think you're a man? You're overgrown jackrabbit of an elf with a hyperactive mahavoroid. 
Well, Jim, I don't understand. Kurt, of course you don't understand. You don't have the brain to understand. All you do have is printed circuits, Spock, Captain. If you excuse me, Kurt, what do you expect from a simmering devil deer's freak? His father was a commuter. His mother was an encyclopedia. But my mother was a teacher. My father was an ambassador. Kurt, your father was a computer like your son, an ambassador for a planet of traitors. Vulcan never lived who had an ounce of integrity. But, Captain, please don't. Kurt, you're a traitor from a race of traitors, disloyal to the core. What like the rest of your superhuman race? You've got the gate girl to make love to that girl. But that's enough. Kurt, does she know what she's getting, Spock? A caress full of memory banks who can be squat, should be squatting in a mushroom instead of passing himself off as a man. He belongs to the circus spot, not the starship. Right next to the dog faced boy, Kurt, ben, Kurt Spock bends the bar, the bar with one blow and not throws Kurt around the transport room with ease. Fortunately, Kirk, he would dodge the blows that damaged the walls, the equipment to volley Kirk. Enough to realize what it, what it, I took, it took to get on your fix. Kind of yours, get anyway. I, and I don't know what you so mad about. It wasn't. It wasn't every first officer that gets to belt his captain several times. But you did that to me deliberately, Kurt. Spot, believe me, Miss Spot. Painful in more ways than one. But the spores, they're gone. I don't belong anymore. Kurt, you said that you were beloved and peaceful. Violent emotions overwhelmed them. Destroyed them. I have to make you angry enough to shake your influence, their influence. That's the answer, Mr. Spock. But that may, that may be correct, Captain. But trying to initiate a ball over 500 crewmen, Collis is hardly illogical. Kirk, I had something else in mind. Can you get put together a subsonic transmitter? Something that we can hook into communication station broadcast over a communicator? Communicator, Spock. It can be done, Kirk. Good. Let's get to work, Spock, Captain. Dragging a fellow officer is called a martial offence. Cut well, we both in the brig. Who's going to build a supersonic transmitter? Spock, that is quite logical, Captain. Phil McCoy. Well now, it's a little bit easy earlier. I need to be county stars, Miss Lena. Need I'm waiting for Mr. Spock and the captain to transport down. There's some equipment to be moved. It wouldn't be, it'd been so long. I wish that we, he'd come back. McCoy, well now, I think I can fix that for you, Enterprise. Bridge, Spock is back in the uniform under the console, under the console when it beeps. Spock, Enterprise, Spock here, field. Lena, this is Lena. I borrowed a doctor's communicator. I was worried that something might have happened to you. Bridge, Lena, are you quite, are you all right, aren't you? Spock, yes. Yes, I am quite well. Phil Lena, can I come aboard? I've never seen a starship before. Bridge. Lena, I st- I want to talk to you, Spock. Are you still at the beam down point? And the doctor there? Phil Lena, yes, to both questions, Bridge. Well, give your communicators back to Dr. McCoy. You don't need to be beam, that, beam that up. I'll take a few moments. Just wait there. there. Out. Cut Mrs. Spock, Miss Kalima is strictly your concern. Should, should you talk to her while well, she's still under the influence of the spores? But well, I'll be back shortly, Captain. So put the room. Once she's materialised, she rushes up to put her arms around him. He does respond, Lena. You're along with the river, so are you? I won't, I won't have felt something wrong, Spock, if necessary. Lena, come back to the planet me. You can belong again. Come back with me, please. Spock, I can't. Lena, I love you. I said that six years ago. Can't seem to stop repeating myself. I know if you couldn't give anything of yourself. You couldn't even put your arms around me. We couldn't have anything together there. You can't have anything together anywhere place else. But you're happy here, crying. I can't lose you now, Miss Spot. I can't, Spot. Responsibility to ship to the man on the, that, that man on the bridge. I am what I am, Lena. If there is, there are self-made pro, pro degrees, then we have to live in them. Mine could be no worse than someone than someone else's. Lena, I have lost you, haven't I? And not only you have lost all of it. The spoils have lost them too. Kirk, the captain just discovered the strong emotions and needs to destroy the spoil influence. Lena and this Lena, and this is for my good. Do you mind if I say I love you? 
You never told me if you have any, another name, Mr. Buck. Buck, wiping away her tears, you couldn't, you wouldn't, couldn't pronounce it. Bridge, Buck. They do not, they're not here, not here. This, of course, I may, I may be made, made more of a suggestion or feeling or feeling it. Kirk, as though someone had put itching powder on the skin, Buck. Precisely, it we should begin to work on their nerves. A few minutes. Feel Sulu. Sorry, dear Sally. Dear Sally, what do you think you're doing? Sulu, I said, I'm oh, sorry, dear Sally. Made you roar like you're clumsy, Sulu. You hadn't gotten in my way. They fight with spades, but elsewhere, around the settlement, fights are breaking out because they're Kowitz. Come on, bring it up, bring it up. Pastor McCoy, he's resting down under a tree. The last tall grass of mint jubilee, julep in his hand. Elias, well, Doctor. I've been thinking about the sort of work I could assign you to. McCoy, what do you mean, what sort of work? I'm a doctor. Alas, not by any, any more, of course. You don't need him, not as a doctor, McCoy. Oh, no. Would you like to see how fast I can put you in the hospital? Alas, I am the leader of this colony. I assign you to whatever work you think I think suitable. McCoy, just a minute. You better make me a mechanic. Then I can treat, I can, then I can treat little tin gods like you. Patch of lice, sorry, said oh, I don't know what made me do that. Lice, I've done nothing, we've done nothing here. No accomplishments, no progress. Three years wasted. You wanted to make this planet a garden. McCoy, you can't stay here. You can't survive out of spores. After you cleaned up, cleared at the star base, you'll be relocated. Yep. It depends what you want. Nice, I think, I think we'd like to get some work done. The work we started out to do, McCoy Enterprise, Sprit, Bridge, Buck, Enterprise, Buck here, Pastor McCoy, this is McCoy, he said the law, we'd like to talk to Captain, Bridge, Spock, just a moment, they're all beginning to call in, Captain, rather continue, ready, I was just saying, several of wishes to speak to you, Kirk, put him on speaker, Kirk here, Pastor, lies, oh Captain, as I said it, you have to transport to Starbase 27. They give you every corporation. Kurt, start making preparations, Mr. Stolo. Stolo, begin transporting your people aboard as soon as more of your crew tricks in. Bridge later, and everybody else is back on duty. McCoy, well, Jim, I was them in the last of the colonists, and they're all in absolute perfect health. A fringe benefit left over by the spores. Kurt, good. McCoy, well, that's the second... Time man has been thrown out of paradise. Well, Kirk, Kirk, no, 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 Burns. It's time we walked out of our own. Maybe we weren't meant for paradise. Maybe we were meant to fight our way through. Struggle, claw our way up, stro- scratch every inch of the way. Maybe we can't stroll to the music of the loot. We must march to the sound of the drums. But poetry, Captain, non-regulation. But we haven't heard much about your, about your, I reckon, Oregon sort of free. You haven't heard much about you and about Oregon free. So to free, Mr. Spock. Spock. I have very little to say about it, Captain, except the first time in my life I was happy.